we will often not think too much about it. And when that happens, the, our definition of infrastructure ends up being fairly narrow, right? And a lot of people immediately gravitate to, well, we're talking about bridges and highways and dams, right? But if we actually spend a little bit of time thinking about it and talking to communities and across the city, what are the things that we really care about? What are the things that we're really trying to achieve? And one of the questions today was about millennials and attracting and retaining youth. And I, and I would argue, well, if that's the challenge, right? If a community is really challenged by trying to attract and retain youth, maybe that's what we value. Maybe that's where we need to be focusing our energy. And maybe our definition of infrastructure has to be based on trying to achieve those things that we really value. So if in this case, uh, attracting and retaining youth was the reason why we're trying to do things, maybe it's not the bridges, maybe not the highways, it's universities. It's a vibrant cultural sector. It's a vibrant urban environment that is going to create the types of things that is going to retain and attract the youth. So my presentation today was very much around the notion of, well, we actually have to go back and understand what is it that we're really trying to achieve in order for us to understand what is the type of infrastructure that we're really going to get value out of. The conversation that we have around transit these days is very much around a city building conversation, right? It has to do with utterly transforming the, the cities in which this is, is built. So it's no longer just about providing a bus that is servicing A to B and moving people back and forth. It actually becomes a whole conversation about the transit-oriented development that you get along the route, right? And, and the modal shift, trying to reduce the impact of car uh, driving and car ownership on cities, right? And how do we actually start to transform cities based on some of these types of investments? And that's when it gets really exciting. So 10 years ago, it was... Um, like pulling teeth to get an urban planner and a transportation engineer to sit in the same room. And today, it's hard to be in a room and not both rep uh, represented there, which is awesome. It's awesome to see. Nevertheless, many of our projects, our transit projects, are still missing the opportunity. And, and, they're, and, and often the case is um, somewhere along the line, the vision gets eroded. Right? or decisions get made that um, are trying to find a cheaper solution and all of a sudden that bigger potential gets eroded. So it still requires a tremendous amount of tenacity, a lot of vigilance from ourselves and everybody else towards that bigger vision, towards that bigger project of really trying to link, again, that investment that we're making to the very reason why we launched that investment. Right? If it really is about city building, then let's make sure that we're investing accordingly. These are actually incredibly exciting times. Um, you can go coast to coast across Canada, right? And every city is embarking on a redefinition of who they are and how they go about doing things. And what are some of the things that they really value as a city, as a community, as a society, and how they can start to reinvest and use cities as a way of achieving some broader, broader objectives, right? So Edmonton is investing in its downtown and Halifax is investing on its waterfront, right? And, and Vancouver is trying to refigure the public realm and the cycling infrastructure. And, um, but so is, is Calgary coming up with new neighborhoods, right? And, and Winnipeg and Toronto and Vaughan and Mississauga. And every one of them is trying to really figure out how do they invest in transit? How do they invest in, in city parks? How do they invest in streets? How do they invest in cycling infrastructure? How do they invest in these things? as part of a much larger scaled project. And this wasn't happening in the same way 10, 20 years ago, right? Uh, but now you open up a newspaper and you're reading about these things and people are getting involved and they're becoming part of the conversation and they're advocating for one or the other side, right? Or they're really engaging in this. 
And I'm convinced that if we carry forth and if we're really trying to, to do this, we're going to start to get some great success stories, right? There already are some great success stories and, um, and they become empowering for everybody else because now other cities can look at you know, what Montreal has done or what um, uh, different places have done and start to imagine, actually, I can also do that, right? My community can also do that. And I can transform how we go about doing things by reimagining our urban environment.